Chapter 36, Baba's Palace. I sat down softly on a large granite circle outside of what looked to be Baba's Palace. The last time I had seen this was when Dragon Ball aired on TV in the late 90s, maybe early aughts. I walked slowly across the circle heading towards the path that leads to the palace proper when I sensed Baba beginning to head my way as well. I stop, waiting for her to arrive, knowing that it'll only be a few moments. I hope this works. I'm running out of fucking options here. I think, concentrating on the far-off entrance. Baba comes floating out on her crystal ball, hovering about three feet from the ground. Her crystal ball isn't amazingly fast, but it only takes a minute before she is floating in front of me. Hmm. Yes, I knew that you'd arrive here today to ask of me a favor. Baba says, looking up at me past the brim of her witch hat. Yeah, I do need a favor, actually. I say, a bit taken aback at being expected. Would you be able to dash? Ah, I can sense that you already know how I work. If you want something from me, I need something in return. The normal cost is 10 million zenny, but we both know that you have no need for money. Of course, you also know that there is another way to earn my favor. She says, interrupting me. You, I think, racking my brain. It had been over 20 years since I'd last seen Dragon Ball, so I really couldn't remember. Hmm, well, you did your best, I'm sure. She says, in response to my obvious lack of knowledge. Today, KLL, you'll face a challenge. Many before you have come, zenniless, begging for help. Only two have ever managed to win their challenge and get their favor. Who? I ask, curious as to who else had come here. My own younger brother, whom you know as Master Rashi. He came to me in Earth's time of greatest need, looking for help in defeating a grave foe. He already had the knowledge, but he did not have the skill. I led him to a fighter that would be of great help. She explains, her crystal ball floating up and down slightly. And the other? I ask, enthralled by her story. Yamcha of the desert. She says, he came looking for his fortune to be told. He thought that the future would give him insight into defeating the same monster my brother would fight. I told him that his fate lay in Corinne's tower, but that I could see no further. Silence blossoms between us, as we both know that Yamcha died there, attempting to survive the sacred water. I frown, wondering if Baba knew that leading him there would end his life, but I shake the thought away. I simply did not have the time to waste. Then I will be the third to face your challenge, and the third to win your favor, I tell her, preparing for her worst. I see. She replies. She floats to the side slightly, before hopping off of her crystal ball. I knew you would say that, and I knew already that I would need something special for you. So KLL, today you will face a challenge greater than any other. She points back towards her palace, as the outer door swings open. My eyes widen comically, and I'm sure I look almost foolish. This turn of events had reminded me of what Baba's challenge entailed. Today I would face one or more mighty foes in a fight for my life. If I won, I would get my favor, and if I lost, I would quite possibly die. My challenger walked confidently down the thin stone walkway from the palace to what I now realized was an arena. They didn't look much different from the last time I saw them. Of course, being dead means you don't age. The last 20 or so steps were taken at a slow gait, a large smile on their face. Hello, KLL. She says, our eyes meeting. Hello, Sana. I reply, getting a measure of her new power. Combat has started. Enemies, Sana, LVL 24. 550 XP. I glance slightly at Baba, wondering if she even knows what she has brought to this planet. That the girl standing before me was a monster even a year ago, and has somehow gained even more strength in the time since. How did you grow stronger, Sana? I ask, genuinely curious. Sana laughs contemptuously before answering. I was allowed to keep my body, just as you were when you died. I was still sent to hell, but there is no end of strong fighters there. Even some that are stronger than even my best, or at least there were. How the hell was she allowed to keep her body, I think, racking my brain again for established lore. That would have been me, KLL, Baba calls over. I knew even then that you would arrive here one day, and who better for your challenge than the only person you couldn't actually beat. I start to reply back, but have to duck backward a leg passes, through where my head was just a nanosecond before. I ignite my aura around me, propelling myself sideways to get out of the reach of Sana's attacks. What's wrong, KLL? Sana asks, cocking her head to the side. Certainly you're not afraid of little ol' me? You know what Sana I should be, I tell her, watching her smile grow even bigger. But I've learned an important lesson. She looks puzzled for a moment, her face shifting to anger, before back to confusion. And what's that? There is a slight pop of displacing air as I throw myself through time and space to reappear directly behind her. The moment I re-enter this version of reality, my form shifts, my aura turning a bright white. I push all my energy into the tips of my fingers as I slam my entire arm through her back and out her chest. Blood spurts everywhere, a literal fountain of it as I rip my arm back out. She drops to her knees, a gurgle all that can come out of her mouth as blood pours from it as well. 
I raise my still bloody hand and place it lightly against the back of her head before I finally respond. I learn that I talk too much. With a momentous push of my energy, I vaporize her otherworld body, coating the arena in front of us in white-hot energy. The thick stone melts and warps under the assault, but I pull it back in time to not destroy the entire area. I stop the attack after another moment, the energy flashing out of existence the moment it is no longer maintained by my body. I lean my head back, letting the potential unlocked form drop, returning to my base form. Combat has stopped. Enemies. Sana LVL 24. 550 XP awarded. Total reward. 550 XP. Level up alert. Turning toward Baba, I ask, Is that it, Baba? Ho 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 ho. She starts laughing. Is that it, he asks. Boy, I knew that you would win that match, and do so decidedly. But then why have me fight at all? I ask, stalking over to her. Can she even die again? She's already dead. To answer the first, the future isn't always foretold. A small insignificant change could mean the difference between winning and losing. She explains, I look forward to see if you would defeat the one you called Sana, and saw that it would be little to no trouble. However, she continues, who is it to say that the future I was seeing was this future? What if the you that showed today hadn't learned that he talks too much? What if the version I saw was another timeline entirely? I guess that makes sense, I reply, scratching my head. To answer the second, no, she cannot die again. She received a body for today only. A body you just destroyed. I do so hate ruining the battles by looking into the future. So, of course, I prepared two challengers for you. She says, pointing again to the large palace doors. Let's see what you make of this one, hmm? The two tall doors slam open again, as my next challenge walks out. He doesn't take his time like Sana did, quickly making his way down the path. He looks much happier than the last I saw him. You won't be able to end this one quickly, KLL, Baba says, watching my reaction. I can't tear my eyes off of the fighter, someone that I didn't expect to ever see again. I'm sorry. I tell him, the sorrow evident in my voice. I'm sorry too, KLL, Bara replies as he stops about 10 feet away. Can you tell me how it ended? Yeah, Vegeta showed back up shortly after you were absorbed. He was missing an arm. I distracted Mage and Bu, giving them time to work out the fusion dance. I tell him, Oh, it was good then that I told King Vegeta? He asks, settling down into his fighting stance. It saved most of our lives. Their power together was unfathomable. It wasn't enough to kill Mage and Bu outright, but they managed to take him out with a suicide move. I explain, That's as good a way to die as any. He says, So this is it then. Yeah, one last fight. I whisper, Don't be so sad, KLL, Bara says pulling out of his fighting stance, and making his way over to me. KLL, I may be dead but I'm not sad. Life didn't end up how I wanted it to, but I can't say I wasted it. I was there for the end of Frisia. I saw our race rise from near servitude to be the dominant power in the galaxy. Bara says, grabbing me into a hug. I reached a level of power that even five years ago would have been laughed at if you even thought about it. So don't be sad for me, man. I close my eyes, hugging him back. The freedom I had received from fully unlocking the gamer's mind was truly a blessing. While it was easy to see how helpful it was, it held back my emotions way too much. Thank you, Bara. You're my best friend. I tell him, letting him go. Let's make this a fight for the ages, shall we? Bara nods, smiling, and then jumps back, landing 20 feet away. Don't think that I'll hold back, KLL. This is our last fight, so I'm giving it my all. They say that warriors don't truly need to speak. That when blade meets blade or fist meets fist, warriors speak to each other in a way that transcends any other form of communication. I throw my base form power level to its max, launching myself through the air at Bara's position. On the other side, his form ripples as the air around him is shoved away from his own power level jumping up. As I swing my right, his two swings in concert, meeting my fist in midair. The resounding crash of our attacks cracks the arena around us for over 50 feet. Yet at that moment, even with so much energy being thrown about, enough power to destroy this planet with a single blow, there was no anger. There was no resentment. There was friendship, happiness, and love. As I used my left hand to shove him back, bringing my knee up and into his face, there wasn't malice. As he blocked using his left forearm, slamming his right hand into my knee to spin me around, there was no regret. We were two of the mightiest warriors this universe will ever see. Two scions that had transcended even the myths and legends of our time. We were best friends. An older man, perhaps a young 50, or an old 45, walks swiftly through a crowd numbered in the tens of thousands. The crowd opens, allowing him through, some bowing, some reaching out as though needing to touch him. The crowd swells around him as he slowly makes his way to a large stone stage. The masses touch him lightly as he passes through, their hands being left with a tingly sensation of raw power as he goes by. It takes some time, but certainly not much, to finally reach the stage. Taking the steps, 
he finds himself centered in front of a microphone, simply waiting for the crowd to silence. My children, I come today to offer you a solution. The man cries, the crowd screaming in joy. I came to you offering you peace. I came to you offering happiness. The crowd seems almost to swoon under his words, as a wave of power passes over them. You, the select few of my children to accept me with open arms, the few to cast away the shackles of your people. Today we rise up, he says, his voice carrying with it an almost intoxicating power of command. Today, my children, we step forth into the world and show them a better way. Today, we show them the truth of their wrongs. He screams, anger in his voice. Today, my children, today we find peace. He finishes. Do you understand? As one the crowd replies, yes, Paternus. Then go forth, my children. Let the reaping begin. He tells them, another wave of power passing over them. The crowd begins to break up, streaming out of the available exits, looking forward to the coming event. Paternus, watching his flock leave, smiles in contentment. Give a man peace, and it will last until it's unneeded. Show a man how to find peace, and he will seek it wherever he goes. He thinks, as the last one exits, the doors echoing as they slam shut. I land on my feet, my hands slamming to the ground as I slide back almost fifty feet. Bara rushes in, his green aura blazing around him as readies another attack. I push, my aura turning a blinding gold as I ascend to Super Scion. As he reaches me, his form flickers as well as he matches my transformation. I duck his outstretched fist, rising up with an uppercut to his jaw, a punch that would have destroyed any lesser being still throwing his back. Using the momentum of my hit, he brings both knees up, one catching my chin, the other missing my arm by a hair. The blow knocks me back, giving him the chance to right himself and come back in swinging. I block, dodge, or duck his attacks, my own return flurry nearly as ineffectual. I say nearly as even though we're just about evenly matched in strength, I have experience fighting more different types of opponents than he does. As he slips one of my kicks, I use the imparted spin to twirl at nearly twice the speed, my backhand catching him flush on the cheek. I use the momentary advantage to rain blows down on him, till a sudden burst of energy from him throws me back. The bioelectricity travels up and down his form as his sudden transformation to Super Scion 2 settles down. Ha! Huh. I yell, matching his transformation, throwing myself back into the fray. The speed boost from Super Scion 2 is huge compared to any other transformation I've experienced. Sadly, while evenly matched in most senses, Bara has always been slightly faster than me. That goes the same for Super Scion 2, even if the difference is probably no more than a point or two. I'm suddenly on the defensive as his form becomes a blur of attacks, several catching me off guard completely. I fight back at a furious pace, all thoughts of defense long forgotten, as the energy displaced by our attacks cause us to rise high into the air. A hard kick to my stomach launches me back over 200 feet before I'm able to right myself. I'm breathing heavily from the exertion and the battle so far, and I can see that he is as well. I know that his body uses less energy than my own does, him being dead and all. Either way, I relish the challenge of defeating someone that actually was my equal in the end. Looks like we're here again, KLL. Bara calls out to me. Will it end the same way? He raises both hands above and behind his head, a sharp pulse of energy filling the sky. A bright spinning ball of green death forms between his hands as he pumps more and more energy into it. I close my eyes, focusing myself, before raising both hands in front of me. A high-pitched whine snaps the air for a moment before a bright blue-green spark of energy fills my hands. It quickly expands into a melon-sized orb of burning energy, nearly blinding in the bright light it is giving off. As one we yell, releasing our attacks high above the desert palace, the air scorched even more as our attacks slam into each other. For a moment it seems that they are equal in strength before the ebb and flow of our energy allows it to move slowly back and forth. With another yell from the both of us, we pour even more energy into the attack, trying to break the stalemate. Again and again, we pour more energy into the attack, till there simply isn't any more to feed into it. There is a flash of white, and the world fades away. I find myself floating in a white void, in my base form. I turn around, look everywhere, trying to figure out what's going on, when I find Bara staring off into the distance, just a short bit away from me. My steps echo as I walk over, till I'm right next to him. Bara, I ask, wondering what's going on. Do you know what this is, KLL? He asks, not turning towards me. No, I can't say I do. I reply, in school, they talk about something like this. They called it a warrior's promise. When two scions that respect, love, or hate each other battle, and are giving it their all, they can find themselves in a white void. A moment of peace. He explains, I thought it a myth, honestly. No one I had ever spoken to had actually experienced it. We all learned it in school, but no one ever got to see it. I see, so this is special then? I ask, looking around at the emptiness of it all. I'd say it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, 
but I'm already dead. Bara laughs, finally turning towards me. Thank you, KLL. For what? I ask as confusion sets in. For what you're about to do. He says as the world shatters around us. The world comes back into focus as the white void fades away. For a moment, I wonder what he meant when I realized that I knew all along. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, I had let Bara win by holding back. I had done him a disservice that day. Instead of showing him that there was further he could push, instead of helping him reach a new height, I had disrespected him and myself. It was time to show Bara the respect he deserved, the respect he had earned. Ko Ken, I yell, forcing my power level to double in an instant, allowing me to pump even more energy into the attack. It almost seems the energy Bara is putting into the attack will outlast the assault, but it's for naught. With a momentous heave, the energy slides back towards him as though caught on the waves of an ocean, before breaking his stance and consuming him. The massive attack explodes, filling the sky around us for miles with white-hot energy. I drop the Ko Ken to conserve energy, smiling at what I sense through the cloud of energy. As it finally fades away, Bara is standing there, smiling down at me. His waist-length hair seems to flicker with internal energy as his power level skyrockets. Super Scion 3 is so far past Super Scion 2 that I can't even say that they are near the same league. Thank you KLL for finally being willing to fight me as an equal. He says as he slips back into his fighting stance. Are you going to join me up here? I drop back into my base form before pushing my energy in that special way to open my potential unlocked form. My aura blazes around me as an almost ethereal energy fills my body. I feel so perfect and weightless in this form. I float back up till I'm level with Bara once more. You're even stronger than before, KLL, Bara says, studying me. Where before I'd say we were nearly equal, there is a significant difference now. Yeah, I reply, sensing the depths of his power. You know me, always moving forward. There are several new enemies out in the universe that I need to deal with. Think you can do it? He asks as his energy flares around him. Either that or I'll die trying, I reply as he launches himself forward. Much like before, the world slows down to a crawl as he gets within range of me. I don't know what it is about this form, but its ability to react to even the smallest movement is bar none. I slide forward through the air, past his guard, catching him in the chest and stomach with both fists. He lurches back from the impact, but I'm already waiting for him, my fist slamming into his cheek like a freight train. I can feel the millisecond passing and line myself up for a kick, right as time snaps back into motion. The kick slams into his side, throwing him away from me as I power after him at my fastest speed. He spins, nearly bouncing off the air as he rights himself and comes back towards me. I suppress the speed boost, instead saving it for a more opportune time, block his bunch and follow up elbow on my forearms. He unleashes a flurry of blows, and I allow time to snap into slow motion again, as I weave around his form, slamming a knee into his stomach, launching him away. As he rights himself again, a boiling ball of energy forms in his palm. I reach down with my left hand and grab my right wrist, readying a blast of my own. Stop! We both grind to a halt instantly, as Baba floats in between us. I'm sorry boys, but Bara's time is up, she says. The form he is using right now ate up what was left of his 24 hours. Shit, of course. I say as I drop to my base form. Across from me, Bara does the same, floating over to me. You'd have won anyway, KLL. I could sense your energy. You weren't holding back, and I couldn't keep up. I may one day be able to bring you back to life, Bara. I tell him. It's a long shot, but it may happen. If you do, I'll take a rematch. He says. Ten seconds. Baba interjects. Goodbye, Bara, I say. Goodbye, KLL. He says as he fades away. Silence fills the sky around us for a moment, before Baba finally speaks. Under normal circumstances, I'd call that fight a draw and turn down your request. But, I ask as we slowly drop the mile back to the ground. I can tell that you need the help. She replies. Thank you then, I tell her as we finally set down. So can you do it? I already did. I sent your message this morning while I was gathering your challenges. She replies as she turns to float back into her palace. I but, I sputter. Why have me fight then? And how did you even know what to say? She pauses, turning around. You missed your friend and needed closure. Your future is dark, KLL. The battles never end for you, and you will suffer before it's all over. I thought you could use a chance to say goodbye for once. Plus I enjoy seeing a good fight. As for how I knew, I look at my own future quite often. I, thank you, Baba. I whisper, think nothing of it, KLL. She says, turning back around to float inside. I'll let you know if I get a reply. I nod, before lifting off into the sky. With a thought, I bring up the level up prompt and click accept. Bing. Level up. Dash 378. 550 EXP to level 21. After clicking accept again, another alert appears. Bing. Congrats on making it to level 21. 
Please enjoy the below perks as a thank you for playing the game. New levels in the trainer room. New feats on the feat tree. Enhanced feats for all your favorite feats. And much, much more. My eyes widen as I read that and immediately click over into the feat selections. Energy suppression power level can be hidden down to 1 slash 10 th of your max power. Energy suppression EX level 9 restricted can suppress your power level down to 1 without suffering exhaustion. Energy suppression enhanced level 21 restricted no matter what power level you are at, no one can sense your energy. Inner eye unlock the inner eye. Adds energy sensing level 2. Adds plus 3 to perception checks. Inner eye yex level 12 restricted. Unlocks the further abilities of the third eye. Inner eye enhanced level 21 restricted. Releases the inner eye's limits. Second wind level 10 restricted. When less than 30% HP is remaining, can regain 40% HP and heal critical conditions. Second wind enhanced level 21 restricted. When at 10% HP, after second wind has activated, unlock your full potential. I pull up my character sheet to double check and nod to myself. I'd been saving those extra feats just for such a time of desperation. This feels like the end game. I think as I immediately select all three new feats. After dropping the four points into my stats as normal, I finalize the selections. A wave of static electricity passes over my entire body, my muscles tightening and relaxing as it passes by. The vision in my left eye flashes multiple colors, before settling down to normal vision. I take a deep breath, feeling the changes my body goes through before I finally pull up the condensed form of my character sheet. Name KLL. Title Super Scion God Gamer. Race Scion. Age 15 years. Status Alive. LVL 21. 3078. 550 4. 500 000. Et. 42 et. 450 XP til LVL 22. Base Energy. 202,500. Energy Regan, 2,025,000.00. Power Level, 42,525,000.00. Energy Modifier, 69.40. Final Power Level, 2,951, 235,000.00 asterisk. Final Power Level with Super Scion Multiplier, 5,077, 485,000.00 asterisk. Final Power Level Potential Unlocked, 698, 318, 991, 225.20 slash asterisk. Final power level with Super Scion 2 multiplier. 67, 835, 880, 000. 000 slash asterisk. I noticed three things that have changed since I pulled it up just a few short days ago. My title has changed, but a blank pop-up shows when I tap on it. My energy mod has increased tremendously, which looking at the full sheet tells me that by using Super Scion God once, it counts as a form unlock, and I gain plus 40 for that. The oddest change, however, is the unexplained symbols that have appeared next to my power level since I drank the sacred water. Where before the symbols had changed over time, seeming to increase somehow, it's now defaulted to a weird purplish pink star. Tapping on it does nothing, as it doesn't seem to be interactive, and nothing anywhere else in my character sheet explains further. It's even weirder because when I checked my sheet a week ago, I still had a weird mess of symbols. I wish there was a guidebook of some sort. I think as I swipe everything away, I concentrate my mind on Cammy's lookout, and with a pop, I disappear.